G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Sunday afternoon here in Australia, market moving up ever so slightly again, so we haven't had any real retracement over the weekend. Will we see it maybe later today or tomorrow morning? Who knows, or maybe we just don't see any kind of retracement for a few days or a week. Uh, time will tell, but look, $2.16 trillion, nice, so we're now back above $2 trillion. I really thought that would kind of be the base and hold, but it didn't. Bitcoin dominance falling ever so slightly. So are people starting to get a little bit excited about altcoins? Quite possibly, the market looks like it. Volume down a little bit, but it's a weekend, that's to be expected. Bitcoin just under $48,000 and gas prices have come down a little bit, which is interesting. All right, as we can see, it's basically a sea of green. There's really not much red going on there. USDT just <laughs> kind of stable, but exactly where it should be. All right, what's performed the best in the last 24 hours? And let's have a look in the top 100. That's where I like to focus my attention. All right, OMG Network up 36%. Terra Luna making a move, nice. Uh, 21%. Arweave, uh, almost 20%. Quantum. Look, lots of really good double-digit moves, which is nice. Solana, I mean, just back on another run. I didn't get to pick it up cheap, and uh, I'm not going to until there's uh, a price pullback. Uh, and even then, we'll just have to wait and see. I do want to get on it, but I just hate the chasings that have pumped so hard already. But look, many cryptos have done that. You know, not all as much as Solana has, and that's the only thing that worries me. But look, Green, 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 lots of good double digit greens, high, uh, high digit single, high single digit green, which is really nice. What about losses though? What hasn't performed so well? All right, Huobi token down 3%, that's not too bad. Axie Infinity, I mean, they went on a mad pump. So again, pulling back just a little bit, hardly any losses really. And then we're moving into, you know, the stable coins and things like that. I mean, you know, Filecoin and Theta down not even 1%. So the gains were pretty good, losses very, very minimal. Now, Bitcoin, have a look at that. It did get rejected almost perfectly from that mark, but now it's just hovering around there. We're going to have to wait and see. This could easily turn red and we come back down, and most likely if we're going to come back down, test around this $45,000 level. That's if we do. I'm never offering you financial advice, and I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It's just what I'm keeping my eye out for. But this looks okay at the moment, and again, you know, there's lots of hopeful people in the market at the moment and I want to be one of them so I am hoping that we break this and then come up fairly quickly and retest 52,000 but there are no guarantees in life again this could reject from here and we could be coming to set even more lows this was just a bit of a fake out uh, before we again rolled over uh, in this you know possible dead cat bounce situation again that's not what I'm thinking that's not you know the way I'm behaving in the market at the moment but Again, it is definitely something that's in the back of my mind, something I'm keeping a consideration from, but we are really holding this kind of 48 ish thousand dollar level pretty well. And my guess is, and that's it, that's all it is, if I had to take a guess, what I like to consider an educated guess, is that come Monday, we probably start to make our way back up and it won't take us too long to come and test 52,000. And then what's good is once we get there, there's really only kind of around about here, 58,000, a little bit of you know resistance and support thereabouts, 57, 58,000, whatever you want to call it. And we should be fairly quickly getting up to 60, sort of three, 64,000. I think we'll find some uh, hard resistance there, but that's not guaranteed. The, ma the market may just get super exuberant, particularly once we kind of break past this you know, $52,000 level. And if we get through here uh, fairly easy, then we may get through that fairly quickly as well. All right, just a couple of news stories I wanted to have a look at. The IMF warns crypto boom poses new financial stability challenges and urges regulators to step up. All right, I, I kind of agree with some of it, but I don't take too much uh, from the IMF because they are, you know, they're part of the old traditional finance who've looked after themselves and, you know, line their own pockets for a long time. I'm not saying they're completely against the average Joe, but they do very little to help the average Joe, and they do a whole lot to keep the big end of town uh, in the big end of town. Now, this is what I found funny, though. The International Monetary Fund, or the IMF, warns that the rising popularity of cryptocurrencies poses new challenges to financial stability. <sighs> yes, 
but also no. Challenges, depending on how you look at it, challenges as in just something good that we got to work with, yes, or challenges that are going to be really hard and difficult. Depends how you look at that. But what they said here is crypto, crypto, I don't even know if I can say this properly, cryptoization can reduce the ability of central banks to effectively implement monetary policy because they've done such a good job for us effectively they haven't been able to effectively uh, implement monetary policy for a long time again other than looking after the top end of town that's what they've done them the imf governments central banks they've been awful at looking after their their general citizens the system the way it works these days is the top end of town is looked after to keep them in the top end of town middle class i.e most probably me and you we make the world go around we do all the work we get you know kind of the least reward for it and then the poor i mean they're just super poor they really are kind of stuffed crypto could possibly change that but what we definitely know for sure is this monetary policy that we have now unless they change it which i don't think they want to they like to keep themselves in that walled garden that's the same keep the rich rich and everybody else you know scraping up the crumbs oh Jesus, I worry about these. And it says it could also create financial stability risks. It could. But hey, with the amount of money that's been printed in that, could it really be that much worse than the system that we currently have? Maybe it could. There's a definite possibility that crypto cracks and goes to zero and all this kind of stuff. But I just don't see it. Some of the cryptos out there, absolute garbage. You know, be very, very careful with what you're investing in. But gee, there's some really, really good ones out there, you know. And my personal opinion, not financial advice, Bitcoin number one, Ethereum number two. And then you start to make your way down. A lot of coins in the top 100 and even some out are fairly good coins. Not all of them, still junk coins in the top 100, don't get me wrong. But I just find this almost ludicrous that, you know, they bring out, they say things like this and say, oh, you know, central banks to effectively implement monetary policy. They haven't been effectively implementing monetary policy for a long, long time. Again, line their own pockets, kept themselves rich, give all the high end of town, you know, money for free. And the rest of us, we have to pay exorbitant amounts of interest, you know, to borrow money and, and the prices of everything goes up. So this is almost laughable. I, I, I wish the IMF would actually be a real international monetary fund that tried to look after everyone. They don't. I'm not saying they don't do anything to, you know, again, they give us the crumbs. They absolutely do. It's not like they're completely trying to ruin, you know, the middle class and the poor, but they're doing a lot to make sure that we stay middle class and poor. So, yeah, this worries me in a sense. Uh, it is the battle that we are up against, and it's why I'm in cryptocurrencies, because I believe it is the way out for me. Uh, and most people like me, middle class to possibly even lower class, depending on who you're talking to, and definitely the poor. Again, bad cryptos, unfortunately, will hurt the poor, but good cryptos, they will help bring the poor out of being poor, in my personal opinion, never financial advice. All right, institutional shift. For the first time ever, Grayscale's top crypto investment product isn't the Bitcoin trust. This is big and this is very, very interesting. According to Crypto Compare report, Grayscale's Ethereum Trust witnessed more daily trading volumes in September than uh, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust for the first time in history. I think a lot of people are getting super bullish about Ethereum and understanding, you know, what it could do. Yes, it's got issues. 2.0, you know, still needs to roll out successfully, and the gas fees are a real problem. But gee, if Ethereum can do what it's been talking about again solve the gas fees and then you know sharding and you know staking for everybody and all the rest of it oh, it's going to revolutionize anything that we've ever had the same way bitcoin did and that doesn't mean bitcoin's no good but it just means that people are now seeing there's still most likely again never guaranteed but a lot more upside in ethereum but the problem there is, and this is why I've definitely got a good position in Ethereum, but I have minimum 30% of Bitcoin at all times because Ethereum, it's not a finished product yet. Bitcoin basically is, other than just a little bit of scaling and things like that, it's, it's good. It doesn't need to change or do anything else. That's not to say it won't, but it is a finished product. Ethereum, it is still possible that it could fail and just not live up to all the hype. 
Hence why I wouldn't rush out and sell all my Bitcoin for Ethereum. I definitely still put money into uh, Bitcoin. My DCA, uh, I'll never stop DCAing really, except for when it gets to, you know, it's in a parabolic mode, then I'm just going to ease off and I'm going to wait for a pullback. Bitcoin certainly isn't in a parabolic mode at the moment. Most coins aren't, they're all well down. But it says here the average daily, vo daily volumes are in, uh, increasing 29% to 250 million. That's 42% of the market share, dethroning Grayscale's Bitcoin trust for the first time ever. So institutions are getting into Ethereum heavy. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure they're still putting money into Bitcoin, but they are now just diversifying because that's what most big investors do. That's the safest route as they like to diversify. And even if you're just 100% in crypto, most people would say diversify. Don't just put everything into Ethereum or everything into Bitcoin or everything into any one thing. That's dangerous in case it fails. But also, you know, the biggest rewards, and this sounds really bad, so please take this, you know, the way it should be in, intended. The biggest rewards come from taking the biggest risks. But the biggest risks are most likely to cost you. So that's what you need to remember. So for me, you know, I definitely take the safer approach. I put most of my money into what I consider the safer cryptos and a lot less into the ones I consider a lot more you know based on speculation some people will tell you crypto is still completely speculative I disagree I think Bitcoin is not speculative the price can be kind of speculative but it's not speculative I think it's here to stay I think the chances that Ethereum are here to stay are seriously high I'd put them up in probably you know the 60 to 75 percent range just because we still haven't got ETH 2.0 we still have massive problems you know with uh, gas fees and scaling that's not completely done yet once that comes and if it's good then obviously again I'd then go it's a hundred percent but nothing's really a hundred percent it's always 99 percent uh, there's always a one percent chance it could fail but you know Ethereum institutions going after it Right, what I want to do now is, as we spoke about Ethereum and lots of uh, institutions are piling into Ethereum at the moment, is I want to bring you uh, some coins that I think are looking primed. Now again, my biggest concern is that if Bitcoin does get rejected from down from here and we start to go downwards, all of these ones that I'm going to bring to you will be uh, basically invalid. None of this will play out. This is all based on Bitcoin breaking up. But Ethereum... Have a look at it against the US dollar. This is going back since, get rid of this, God, what? August 2015. I don't know if that's when Ethereum started. I know Ethereum started in 2015. I just don't know if that was the first. But here's the average line going through Ethereum where it's got lots of touch points, heaps of touch points here, resistance. And I showed you this the other day. At the moment, to me, Ethereum is under its fair value. Now, what can we see is that Ethereum has not spent a lot of time underneath this line. It has after that bear market and then obviously, you know, that super low point where it got down to prices not seen with the, you know, 2020 March crash of everything. But then it's been making its way back up to this line and it just keeps bouncing around, jumps up below, jumps down below. But generally, Ethereum has spent a whole lot of time way above this line. Now, does this guarantee that that's going to continue to play out? Absolutely not. But this is just a gauge that I'm looking at. And to me, Ethereum looks like, again, you can move this line around a little bit if you want. You know, you can bring it down here and say, no, that's uh, more about where it should be or, you know, directly through there. Or again, maybe some people go up here and say it's severely underpriced. I don't know. I like to just kind of take the, the average where I see a lot of touch points. And this is where I'm seeing the most touch points. So for me, Ethereum looks undervalued. I like to buy things when they're undervalued. I don't like to buy them when they're overpriced. All right, what about Ethereum against Bitcoin? So I showed this one the other day. Look, it had this uh, wedge, bang, broke out above. Now have a look what it's done. Very, very interesting. Come back and it's retesting this line and starting to make its way back up. That is a very bullish sign. Now again, nothing is guaranteed in life, but also have a look where it is. It's currently sitting at some key marks. It's been support before and resistance. So what we're hoping for is that it now jumps up, now starts to use this as support, 
and then starts to make its way up to here and then eventually to get to a new all-time high against Bitcoin. And I think a lot of people are thinking that Bit uh, Ethereum is going to do that. So how much higher can it go against Bitcoin? That will be the interesting question. But this is looking like a pretty good setup. In my personal opinion, again, I can never offer you financial advice, but I expect that we're going to get up here, find some resistance, come back down, eventually jump up, and then start to use this as support before then making whatever the new all-time high is. And I'm not going to try and tell you what the new all-time high is. That's too hard. I have no idea. And I'm not going to try and tell you when it is. But it does look like these uh, longer bull runs uh, you know, the cycle has changed. How much has it changed is then the next question. All right, another one. Link. Link has just, it's been a constant prover since its inception, basically back here in February 2015. It's been on the up and up. It goes well above. It'll go a little bit below, as we can see here. And at the moment, it's looking like it's a little bit below. I don't know if we're ever going to see these kind of explosive gains again. We could. But what I know is it generally trades up from here. Can definitely go below at times, we can see that. So for me at the moment, Link just looks good. It looks like it's not quite fair value, so it's still under fair value. I'm happy to buy things at fair value or below. I just don't like to buy things when they're overpriced. I'd, wa I'd rather wait for it to come back to the average. Look, the biggest gains are going to be made when you really buy something that's severely underpriced. So again, back here was a good time to buy it if you could manage to get it there. And again, if you managed to get it here, that was probably a really good price. But again, look where we are. It just looks like it's good. What about against Ethereum? Again, starting to look super good. We can see that this is basically the floor. This is, you know, if you can get Ethereum down, uh, Link, sorry, against Ethereum down here, great. This yellow may be the new bottom. We may never see Link come back down to here again. Only time will tell, but this red, uh, sorry, yellow line looks like a good place to buy. But what are we seeing? Bang, this is where it is. Support, 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 support. It's hitting this a lot of times now. Some people will say the more times it bounces off something, the more likely it is to go below. So the downside is Link may fall down here, which is definitely possible. But then most people would suspect that it's going to find support here. Could come down to here, but I think that's more real bear market. And again, if you believe we're in a dead cat bounce, then none of this matters. But if you think this is just a blip before the next up, then again, look at the upside. Can Link recapture its old all-time high from Ethereum? I don't know. But let's say we just get about halfway there. That's a pretty big move. The percentages are massive because Ethereum is most likely going up at the same time. As opposed to the downside is probably to here if it does go down, but maybe down to here. The downside is far outweighed by the upside. Link to BTC. Again, something very, very interesting. There was the floor. That's the bottom. If you could have got it down there, great. This looks like it'll probably be the new floor. Will that last forever? I don't know. Big spike. Again, everything was going crazy back in sort of, you know, August. That was the DeFi kind of summer. Now we've come down, but look at this. Bang. Found support. And now the support starts, seems to be a little bit higher against BTC. This white line now st seems to be the support. So again, what's the risk? We go down to here in Bitcoin, maybe we go down to here. But again, I'd say that's bear market. If you ever see uh, Chainlink down around about here, and it's simply because it's uh, a general market cycle, not bad news and you know code faults and all the rest of it, then I'll be jumping all over it. I don't know if we'll see it down there again. But at the moment, it looks like it's good because the risk is most likely back down to here where there's been plenty of support. The upside is, again, if it breaks new all-time highs, then the upside is massive. Even if it only does sort of half of it, though, the upside is still massive. And that's what I'm seeing at the moment. All right, polka dot Again, this hasn't been out for long enough, so we don't have a lot of info to go on. But here's where it really started. And again, there's the line. This is where we keep bouncing. This is a little bit over its fair value price. But again, I don't mind buying it around there if I believe we're in a, uh, in a bull market. Because again, if you had to bought it here, eventually if it just keeps trading sideways, 
it doesn't really matter. But eventually, things generally do this. If it's a good project, project and all the rest of it. So for me, DOT doesn't look too bad. It could definitely be better in the dollar value, but that can change quickly. Let's have a look at it against ETH. Again, this is the floor. If you could get it down here, this was the best price to get it at. And it even went below. So, you know, maybe this is the floor, but this looks more like the floor. This is a bit of an outlier. Because look, bang, support, bang, support, bang, support. And now, have a look where it is at the moment. Sitting perfectly along here. So this is against Ethereum. It looks like it could be a good buy. Again, the downside, maybe we've got to go down to here. Maybe we're going to, by some miracle, come down to here. Definitely possible. But what about the upside? That's if we just kind of reach old all-time highs. What happens if we set new all-time highs? Risk to reward, ladies and gentlemen. All right, against Bitcoin. Again, that's the floor really down here. This is uh, the new possible floor. Again, we've had a fair few touches. Now it is up, but what's interesting is it's been forming this kind of wedge. And I mean, have a look at it in here. This looks interesting. The risk, maybe we come down to here, maybe we come down to here. The upside is still pretty good, not as good, but what happens if we set new old all-time highs? And again, what happens if we then go up to something like here? The upside is quite nice. Again, I'm, I'm not saying any of this is guaranteed to happen. It's all still based on Bitcoin. If Bitcoin, you know, as they say, poops the bed and falls over, then none of this is valid. But I think, you know, DOT, in my mind, is a good project, and that's why I'd look at it. I wouldn't be aping into DOT here. I'm waiting to see what it does here, particularly against the dollar, like I said. You can probably come back down a little bit in the dollar value. In the ETH value, I mean, it's sitting right on that mark. It could come back down. Uh, and against Bitcoin, it just looks like it's forming a wedge, and if it breaks to the upside... It'll probably be a pretty good move, but it can just keep traveling sideways, definitely possible. All right, last but not least, Engine. A coin that uh, I really like, you know, with the whole NFT gaming sort of side. Here's where it's been since, again, the crash of everything, March 2020. And this is its average price. Now, it has spent some time under here, so it could definitely stay under, but it's also gone well above. So at the moment, it looks to me like it's undervalued. It's just the way it looks. No guarantees in life. We need a little bit more information. All right, what about against Ethereum then? Very similar to a lot of these other projects. Seem like it's just bouncing on a support line. Now, definitely could go lower. So the risk is we probably might come back down to here where there is a lot of support. I mean, look at it. Support, 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 support. We fell down. It was a bit of resistance. But I would say you're probably going to find support around about here. So the risk is that maybe we've got to come down to there. Possible we come down to there. But again, that's more bear market stuff. I don't believe we're in a bear market. And if you don't, then these are things you want to have a look at. But if you do believe we're in a bear market, then you definitely want to wait to get in back over here. But now again, look at the upside. Look at the massive spikes it has on occasions. If this just gets to about, let's say sort of roughly here halfway. God, what is that? 4,530? to 12,162. That's basically a 3x in its value against Ethereum. Who knows what Ethereum might do in that side. Now if it goes and sets new all-time highs against Ethereum, it's nearly a 5x to get to old all-time highs, let alone set new ones. And again, who knows what price Ethereum might be then, so that's why it's hard to pick. Last but not least then, let's compare it against Bitcoin. All right, there seems to be the floor. It's been down here heaps of times. It's moved up, and have a look what it's doing now. This has been an area of support. We had a breakout, and it was a fake out. It came back down and retested, but really it's still just kind of traveling sideways. So at the moment, I think it looks all right. Again, it's not the best one out of the lot, but I like Engine. I believe in it. I think it's a good project. So for me, again, the... The downside is you're most likely going to come down to somewhere around about here. Don't get me wrong. So there is some downside. Could come to there. But the upside... Sorry. From here. And again, is really you're probably going to look to be getting somewhere around about here. So 3,230 
to 5,221. Almost a double, not quite a little bit less, let alone should it then get to its old all-time high. That literally is probably a double there. And then who knows what it does after that. So they're the coins I'm looking at. I'm still not aping into any altcoins really. I'm focusing on Bitcoin and uh, stable coins at the moment. I, again, I've said this before, I need to see Bitcoin get through this $52,000 level. Now, if Bitcoin gets on a bit of a run, it will suck up some of the liquidity anyway. And that will probably even out some of these charts up there. But for me, yep, focusing on Bitcoin, uh, and not going majorly into it in case we are in a dead cat bounce. So we're very close to getting over really the mark that I think if we can break this $48,000 mark, it's almost guaranteed that we're going to go past 50, uh, sort of three and start to, you know, test old all time highs. But there are no guarantees in life. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that gain train and I'll see you next time.